what's up guys? I'm Nick Acosta, and I just want to bring a short message that I got while I was reading the Word of God. So I was reading in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, and when I got to verse 13, I saw something, and I want to bring it to your attention. This is what verse 13 says. It says, And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Now I'm going to keep going, but I want to stop right there. It says that the eyes of the Lord see everything and we are naked to him and he sees us in all that we do. It's him, the one we must give account to. A lot of times as new covenant believers, as those who are growing in the knowledge and the understanding of the gospel, of the new things, of the new covenant, of our identity in Christ, we seem to think that God only sees the good about us and not anything else. So we kind of we kind of get strong in the confidence of what we received in Christ. However, we tend to get weak in the things that the Lord might want us to change about our walks. You follow? So it, it says that the Lord sees us and we're naked to him and we must give account. There's still a judgment for all the things that we do on earth. That's the word. That's what it says, right? And as believers, we still should be conscious that the Lord is watching us, right? Now, 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 now let me stop here because a lot of people, they don't like this type of teaching, even though it's in the word, they don't like it because they think that you teaching the body of Christ, that the Lord is watching and that we will give account to the Lord for all that we do and, in, and for the way that we live, they think that that's going to make us afraid of the Lord. It's going to instill fear in us. However, I came here to bring you a perspective that's going to bring freedom because with the gospel, when it's preached properly, it brings conviction. It brings the desire for righteousness, but it also brings freedom and comfort and grace. Lots of grace. That's what the gospel is about. So let me keep going because I want to show you something. All right. It says, so the Lord sees and we must give account. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. All right. The Lord wants us to know that he sees us and is watching and that we must give account to him at the end for our lifestyle, our actions. But the Lord doesn't want us to be afraid of coming to him. He doesn't want us to be in denial. He doesn't want us to be fake. He doesn't want us to say, well, you know, I'm okay because I'm a son of God. I'm okay because I'm under grace. I could do what I want. The Lord's not going to judge me because I'm in the new covenant. Well, that's not true. Okay, if that was the case, the Bible wouldn't say in the New Testament that New Testament believers who teach teachers are held to a higher standard of judgment, right? So we know they're talking about believers when they're talking about teachers and it's saying they will be judged even greater. That means we will be judged, period, right? So I know that the Lord wants us to watch our steps in our lives, but he does not want us to be scared of living. He doesn't want us to be so fearful that we freeze up and now we're sin conscious. He doesn't want us to be that, but he wants us to be real, to admit that the way that we're living maybe needs a little adjusting. The things that we're doing maybe need a little help from the Lord. And this is the answer. He doesn't want us to run away from him like Adam did in the garden. He doesn't want us to be afraid of his presence. In fact, him watching over us and us knowing that we will give account to the Lord for all that we do gives us a desire and a motivation to introspect, right? To be introspective and to examine our lives and admit that some things we might need help. And that is not supposed to lead us away from the Lord. But watch this to the Lord, because it says, it says right here, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. 
So Jesus is not on the throne looking at us like, wow, how could you? Wow, you're such a sinner. Wow, you're so weak. Jesus is saying, I know what you're going through. And I know how tough that temptation is because I've been there, my son. And Jesus is saying, I'm the high priest. I paid the price and I brought that sacrifice, that blood to the altar for you. And I know what you're going through and I know you can do it. It's saying, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. He says, if I did it, you can do it because my spirit is in you. If I went through that temptation, if I went through those things that human flesh goes through and I know those desires you're feeling and I know those thoughts and I know that carnal mind and how it's fighting you and I know the lies and the tactics of the devil, but I did not sin. My spirit is in you. Son, hold on a little tighter. Admit you have an issue. Admit you need grace. Admit that you know that the way you're living, you're going to be judged according to. So let's do something about it. And this is what it says right here. Let us therefore, see I told you it's not supposed to lead us away from the Lord, but to the Lord. Knowing that we will be judged, knowing that he's watching, and knowing that we will give account for our lives is supposed to lead us to the Lord. Watch this. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So you see, my brother and sister, us understanding, you hear me? Us understanding that the Lord is watching us and we're naked to Him and He will judge us according to our works on the earth. It's supposed to give us a wake up call and it's supposed to help us and motivate us to inspect, to examine what we're doing, how we're living, what our thought life is. And it's supposed to lead us to the Lord, to the throne of grace, to Jesus, the high priest who endured and who overcame temptation, but He Himself self empathizes with us because he felt and went through those same things that we are going through and he's gonna have grace for us he's gonna say you know what you can do it because if I did not sin and my spirit is in you there's an ability there's a potential that you have so come to me not like Adam running away from God's presence but he's now drawing us to his presence and the Bible says that we can come boldly before the throne of grace boldly not ashamed not in full of condemnation see a lot of people say that oh if you talk about about God's judgment or if you talk about God looking at you and your actions and seeing you apart from the blood I'm not talking about that I'm talking about us being real about us being real and admitting hey this walk doesn't look like the walk of Jesus and I shouldn't keep putting it off saying oh it's okay I'm healing the sick oh it's okay I'm prophesying oh it's okay it's all about my call and my ministry no it's not we will give account to that for that we will be just for that so we need to examine and we need to say you know what Everything must stop right here. I must come through the throne of grace boldly because I know there is mercy for me. Because in the presence of the Lord, there is mercy. Mercy is here. See, we didn't just receive mercy when we said yes to the Lord and believed in Christ and in the gospel and God saved and forgiven of our sins. We're born again and the Holy Spirit came inside of us. Mercy endures forever. There's mercy now. There's mercy for every believer in the world not only unbelievers every believer who's not living right who is a who who is not happy with their walk who is still sinning who is still walking in the flesh there is great mercy in the throne of grace in the presence of the lord and the high priest jesus is saying come to me not only will you receive mercy but i will give you the grace that you need and I will remind you that if I did it you can do it too so don't run away from the Lord and don't reject and don't ignore the convictions of the Holy Spirit about your lifestyle come to the Lord boldly because there's mercy and the throne of grace great mercy and he's gonna make you more like himself in fact that's what the word says that you're gonna be transformed right by the renewing of your mind transformed and conform to the image of the son his job is to make you more like him because a good father wants his son to walk just like him and to look like him and imitate him that's why it says be holy for god is holy be imitators of God, when we keep rejecting and acting like everything's okay, we will never be transformed because we will never run to him, to the throne of grace, receive mercy, and get up again even stronger and really fulfill our calling, which is not just the healings in the ministry, it's looking like Jesus in private 
as much as in public. That's true, true integrity and that's true identity and the true gospel of the new covenant in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to encourage you to run to the throne of grace today. If you feel like you need it, if you feel like you've been walking according to the flesh, if you feel like there is something that is held up to the Lord's eyes and you are naked before him and you feel like you will give account of that, run to him, not from him for there is mercy. Amen. I'll see you next time. If you think this is the word of God, I want you to like this video. I want you to comment on this video and I want you to share this video because that will make sure that the video circulates and goes around and reaches more and more believers in the world here on social media because we all need to grow and be more and more like him and be transformed. So go ahead, like, comment, and share this video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and make sure that this message goes out because we need to be transformed and we need to stop being fake and we need to start admitting that we need the mercy of the Lord. Amen. Bless you guys. Thank you guys for watching that video. I know sometimes it's hard to hear messages like those, but it's in those messages that we get a wake up call and we come back to the reality of what the word of God says. And there is nothing that makes us more like Jesus than humility. And there is nothing more humble than saying, you know what? I need the mercy of the Lord. You know what? I need to go before the Lord and repent. There's nothing more humble to me than repentance. Not just saying I repent, I repent in a traditional, ritual, religious way that we're used to and seen in the church for decades. The real repentance from the heart saying, wow. I don't, I don't think the Lord is pleased with this. I don't think I should live like this. I don't think Jesus lived like this. I don't think this is my identity being displayed in my life. I'm so sorry for this. I wish I would have never done it. I don't want to do it again. I'm going to come before the throne of grace and receive mercy. That's repentance. And there's nothing more humble than that. This is the message of humility, the message of Jesus Christ. And I encourage you to listen to this one more time and come before the Lord and share this video because I need it, I'm sure you need it, and I'm sure there's many more who need it. Amen.